Well, praise God. Welcome back, everyone, to this week's Bible study lesson. I'm Gareth, and I will be sharing this lesson with you today. Well, we I'm just so excited to be back with you. Uh, I've been traveling. I've been in and out of the country. I've been ministering in uh, Ethiopia, and uh, it's just been a, a real blessing for me. And um, I've been super busy, but um, this is... This is what gets me excited is spending time with you for the next 30 minutes, sharing the word of God with you and, and trusting God for miracles uh, at the end when I, uh, when I put my faith with yours and I pray for you. You know, we serve a, a, a big God. We serve a, a, a great, magnificent God. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Um, uh, the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is with us. We serve a loving Father, a Father that has a plan, that has a purpose for our lives, for your life. And so we can expect good things. If we serve a God, a, a God of love, well then, God who loves us, the creator of the universe, He is going to do great things for us. But we need to believe. We need to have faith. We need to believe in the Word. We need to believe in His promises. We need to uh, trust in his goodness we need to turn to him we need to look to him um, and uh, I know that God will do something in your life well today I have a, a short lesson that I'm going to share with you and if you have your Bibles you can turn to Luke chapter 14 and we're going to read from verse 16 to to verse 14 and uh, that'll be our main scripture for for today and then I'll just share uh, two scriptures as an introduction and then we'll we'll spend most of our time in Luke 14 uh, verse 6, 16 to verse 24 and the first scripture that I just want to share with you um, is 1 Timothy 2 um, chapter uh, verse 3 and 4 so the first book of Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires all men to be saved and come and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So yeah, we see that starts off by saying, uh, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. So that verse is framed by, by referring to God as our Savior. God is our Savior. He is a God who saves. He is the God of salvation. It is God who sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us at the cross. God initiated our deliverance. God initiated our salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave, John 3.16. So God, the God that we serve, our Father, our Heavenly Father, is a God, He's God, our Savior. So when we, we look at the Father, He loves us. And so therefore, when we were born into sin, he loved us so much, he wanted us to get saved. That is his will. You see, God's will, God's plan is that we be saved. In, what does it mean to be saved? It means to enter into a relationship with him by receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. And now we live the kingdom life. Now the kingdom, the government of heaven is established in our heart. We're, we're, we're become born again by receiving the Holy Spirit, by receiving the Spirit of God. And we are alive in Christ. We are become one with Christ. We look to Him. We serve Him. We become like Him. We, we want to become more like Him. And then ultimately, we live in eternity with our Father. But the second part of 1 Timothy 2, 3 and 4, it says... So, um, God our Savior desires all men to be saved. God, who is a Savior, He's our Savior. He desires that all men to be saved. And that word men means man and woman, but humanity. So, it's God's desire that all people, all people be saved. That is his will. That is his desire. That is, that, is, that is his heart. And so if we claim to be um, 
children of God, we need to have his heart. We need to have the same heart. We need to have his, his mission and his purpose in mind. We need to love what he loves. We need to hate what he hates. We need to desire what he desires. We need to live his, the life that he has planned for us. So the heart. So yeah, we see that the heart of God is a savior. He's a saving, saving God. You and I are saved. And he wants all people to be saved. And so that they can come to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The, the gospel is the truth. And then Luke 19, verse 10, For the Son of Man, talking about Jesus, has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus came to this earth to restore the, the relationship that we once had with the Father. The only way through to fa the Father God is through His Son, Jesus Christ. We have to believe on the name of Jesus. We have to call on the name of Jesus. When you call on the name of Jesus, you will be saved. So we can only get to God through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. We don't get to God through Buddha. We don't get to God through Confucius. We don't get to God through Hare Krishna. We don't get to God through, through idols, through whatever. We get to God the Father through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And so if anyone tells you otherwise, that is not the gospel. I believe the gospel. I believe the Bible. I believe the good news. For me to be a Christian, that is what I need to believe. And when we, when we come to the Father, we repent of our sins. We ask God for forgiveness. We receive Him as our Lord and Savior, and we then, from there on, we move forward to to uh, with Jesus. Uh, we move forward with Him, through Him. Hallelujah. So yeah, we see God is a God of He's a He's a saving God. It's His will that everyone be saved. Jesus has come to seek and to save that which was lost. I was lost. Once I was lost. But now I am found. Hallelujah. But uh, Jesus always knew where I was. Jesus always knew this, my, the state that I was in. Jesus and the Father knew that I needed redemption. He knew that I had to, if he didn't stretch out his hand and take me out of the miry clay, if he didn't reveal himself to me, then I would still be lost. I would still be in the mud. I can have all I can have all the material possessions in the world. I can have the most powerful position. I can have the biggest family. I can have the most money. I can have all these things. But if I don't have Jesus, I am lost. I am nothing. I am nobody. Um, and so Jesus is the answer. And so if 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 the if God the Father is a God who saves and he wants all men to be saved. And then he sent Jesus Christ on a mission to save the lost. Now we're saved. Um, what next? What now? Well, we have a duty and a responsibility as the church to get people saved. It, was, it is the heart of God. It is the heart of Jesus, the mission of Jesus. So why do we... Why do we not continue with the work that Jesus and the Father has done and the Holy Spirit has done in our lives, has done in our hearts? How do we not evangelize if that is the heart of God, the plan of God? We're, we're, we were evangelized and, and we were born again. So why do we stop short of not telling the world about the love of God? We have a duty and a responsibility and a calling to tell people about Jesus, about the gospel, about the truth. We have a, we, we should have a sense of duty and responsibility to the Father. If we claim to be children, of God. Surely we should have the heart of God. 
we should have the same purpose and the same mission as him. So if you not, if you and I, and I always include myself when I'm preaching this, I preach, I preach to myself. We, if we don't go, then who's going to go? Are we, are we, are we that type of, of church of that type of people that we, we put, we put it on others? No, a pastor is going to is going to go and win souls. No, no, pa, uh, the, 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 it's always someone. It's the church out there. They they are going to they the ones that will go and win. No, we're all called to the ministry in a sense that the moment you get born again, you are in ministry because before you were born again, you were out of the family. You were outside the walls, so to speak. You were, you weren't, you weren't in the family of Christ, but when you got saved, now you're, now you're in, now you're part of the family. You are the church. You're it. You, you are the, the answer to the last days in the sense that God always uses people. He uses a man, he uses a woman, he raises up prophets, he raises up kings, he raises up people to go and speak, to go and proclaim, to go and teach, to go and win the lost. We are called to win the lost, no matter the cost, right? So my question is, if I don't go and preach, then who's going to go? Do Am I leaving it up to someone else to go and preach and to go and win souls? You might say, you know, I'm not a soul winner. Why are you not a soul winner? And and what also what I've discovered is 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 that we mustn't hide behind a the church when it comes to winning souls. Um, what do I mean by that exactly? I've seen huge ministries where they're doing great things, but then there's so many souls getting won in the service and. Um, there are many workers, but, but people step, step back and because there's souls that are being won during the services and there's lots of people, they feel that they don't have to go out and win souls. They feel like, no, there's enough souls being won on Sunday morning. Um, you, it's like we're coasting. It's like we're coasting through and we can easily, we, we easily um, lost in the crowd. And, uh, and, and I, I suppose that's okay. But the question is, how many souls are you winning? How many people are you winning to the Lord? How many people are you personally telling about Jesus? Um, and so don't become a person that um, doesn't do anything. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll leave that there. Let, let the Bible... Let, let, let the Bible convict us go to Luke 14 Jesus replied so Jesus is talking and he's telling a parable Jesus replied a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests so Jesus is telling a parable and the parable is a the the man who was preparing the great banquet is father God is the father God he's preparing this banquet and the banquet is the kingdom of heaven the banquet is the family of Christ. The banquet is an invitation to come and to sup with Him, to come and to enter in to that fellowship, to enter into that life, to enter in to the fold. So, so the heart, once again, the heart of God is that all men be saved. The heart. Of, so the the matter of the fact is that God wants everyone to be a part of this banquet. God wants everyone to be a part of this party, this celebration. The real the real life is with Jesus is in Jesus Christ. Come on, the real celebration is eternal life. The real celebration is where the Holy Ghost is in us and upon us and and we're alive with Christ and now we're living a life of of of, of victory we, we're living a purposeful life we have a mission we have a calling and that is to populate uh, uh, heaven and to plunder hell we are called to win the lost and there's a great banquet and God is inviting us into this into this um, mission he's, he's inviting us into his purpose so yeah a cert, so jesus jesus is telling the story a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests so jesus spoke parables so that people could understand okay at the time of the banquet he sent his servant who are the servants excuse me who are the servants 
Well, we're in the we're in the house already. We're part of the preparation of the we're we're part of the party. The 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 master, the servants will be in the house with the master. So they it's it's a given that they already with with the master in the house, but they're serving the guests that are in the house. They're going to be doing the work. God has called us to be workers in his kingdom. The, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord, our God of the harvest, to, for, to bring in laborers. So, so God is the master. The banquet is the invitation into his kingdom, into his cause, into his house. The servants are you and I who have already said yes to the invitation. Well, we're already in the house. We're part of the household of the master. <laughs> so, but we're workers. We're, we're, meant to, we're meant to serve. We do the work that God has called us to. So once again, the master didn't go out. He sent people to go out. God sends people to go out. And to invite. So what happens here? So at the time, uh, at the time, verse 17 of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. You see, the time of salvation is now. That's what the Bible says. The time of salvation is now. You are not guaranteed of a tomorrow. If you're born again, you guarantee that you're going to be with Jesus in heaven no matter what happens. So if I, if I go to heaven tomorrow, that's okay. I'm going to my daddy in heaven and I'm ready to go. If I get raptured now, I'm ready to go. But I live a life of purpose. I never stop living a life of purpose. I never stop talking and preaching and winning souls, right? So, so we're ready. No matter, come rain, come shine. If challenges come tomorrow, I'm ready. Whatever happens, I'm ready. But salvation is for now. The Bible says the time of salvation is now and the time is running out. And so th there should be a urgency in the, 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 the workers, in the pastors, in, in, in the missionaries, in the evangelists, in the prophets, in the apostles. If you don't have an urgency, something is wrong. If you don't have an urgency to win souls, something is wrong. If you don't have an urgency to win the lost, to establish the kingdom, to build the church, to raise up leaders, to go and, 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 and uh, bring the kingdom of heaven into this earth, something is wrong. If you are laxidate, if you think this is a time where you can sit back, relax, and watch people People do what they do and and there's no sense of urgency well you need to get to Jesus that's all I'm saying you need to start praying okay because I'm going to show you what 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 Jesus teaches yeah verse 18 but they all alike began to make excuses so the the the, the, the time for the party the food is ready the drink is ready the, the guests are coming in the music is playing the house is clean the house is prepared the people are there this is the moment now is the time of salvation and then what are the people so we're inviting the people come 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 everything's ready and then they start saying i can't i can't come to the party i can't join you and they give all kinds of excuses don't be the person that makes an excuse as to why the church cannot be filled. Don't be the person that makes an excuse as to why we cannot win souls. May, don't be the person that makes the excuse as to why you can't go out and preach the gospel. So yeah, he says, verse 18, they all made excuses. The first said, I've bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me, the field. So he says, hey, <laughs> you know what? I've got a, I bought a field. I've spent money. I got to take care of my field. What does the field represents? Represent? It's your property. It's your uh, possessions, and it's your prosperity. Don't let your prosperity keep you from the things of God. Don't let your possessions keep you from preaching the gospel. So this guy said, "Hey." And I can't, I can't attend church. I can't come to the party. I can't be a worker because I've got to take care of my thing. I've got to take care of my stuff. Then verse 19, another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse 
me five yoke of oxen so they use the oxen to plow the field um, and so the oxen represents your work it represents your career it represents your studies so am i saying uh, uh, pastor must i leave my my job and must i go into the full-time ministry well if jesus calls you yes but i'm not saying that i'm saying that there's got to be you cannot put your work above the things of 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 god because then that's your idol is your career your idol is your workplace your idol is your studies pastor i've got an exam on monday i can't i can't come to church on sunday for two hours because i got to study for my exam well then the studies is your idol why can't you pray trust god to um to help you with your with your test you plan your week and you can study when you come back from church you can study the week in the week you can study before the night before and trust god that he will supernaturally help you to 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 do well within your test provided that you study yes but you also got to plan your life but don't don't make always make that an excuse you see an excuse can will always be a good reason people come up with great and reasonable good reasons as to why they cannot right so we the, we can't have excuses and then so so the first excuse was i've got a field i bought a field and then the next one was i've got five oak, uh, a yoke of oxen and then what did the other guy say well i just got married so i can't come married marriage relationship family pastor i can't i can't be involved because you know what I got to be with my I got to I got to be with my family. Yes, you've got to be with your family. Yes, you've got to take care. That's your first ministry is your family. But when you keep your family from coming to church, your children from coming to Sunday school or to youth and you don't get the word and your your wife doesn't get the word, your you your family doesn't get the word, you keeping them from the blessing. You keeping them from from the presence of God. That is bringing your family to church in the presence of God. Can you tell me something that, that, is, that is more quality than that, that has more quality time than being in the presence of God? Is going to a restaurant, skipping church, going to a restaurant with your, with your whole family, your in-laws, your mom, your auntie, your cousin, is that, is that more quality time than being in church with your family, receiving the direction of God for the week, receiving the blessing upon your whole your your home. Is that more quality time than being in church? No. Once again, plan your life. Plan plan. That's we're going to church. We're all going to church, and after church, after we've done our outreach, after we've done the ministry, after we've done what we've called to, then we can go and have some fun. And go and uh, relax and and, and uh, eat out and that's that's not the issue. The issue is is what are we putting above the presence of God? What are we putting before the ministry, before being with Him? And so, yeah, these people start giving giving all these excuses. Now remember, who is the master? It's Father God. So now, how does the Father respond to these excuses? Does he say, oh, you know, I understand. I understand these are important things. You know, you spend so much money buying the field. You know, I understand you spent a million dirhams buying the, you know, you bought this new business. I get it. You spent 20 million in, in you've invested. So, you know, I, I know. But is that how the father, the master responded? Look what he said. The servant came back and reported this to his master, uh, saying, uh, talking about the excuses. And the owner of the house became angry. The owner of the house became angry. Angry. What is your excuse? What is, what is your excuse as to why the church cannot be full and, and there be overflow and, and we're winning people for Jesus and, and the kingdom is, in, is expanding in, in your church? Excuses of the crutches of the uncommitted you know we serve a god of overflow we serve a god of more than enough that's the god that we serve god wants our church our churches 
to overflow. Hallelujah. He wants your service, your church, wherever you are at, wherever you're streaming from, He wants overflow. It is, it is God's will that all men be saved. He wants His house full. That's what He says in the Scripture. He wants His house full. He wants overflow in the house. That is God's plan. But first of all, we, we, we have to put excuses aside. We have to love people. Love people. For God so loved the world that he, that he gave. Why did He give His Son? For me and you to be saved. For people to be saved. Through the blood of Jesus, we, we were saved. So we've got to love people. We've got to love people. Matthew 5.13 You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. That's the King James Version. It says, you are the salt of the earth. But he says now, if you've lost your flavor, your savor, this old word it, it, it uses, some translations say flavor, then what is it good for? Yeah, the word says it's good for nothing. It's, 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 you're going to throw it out. And the question is, have you lost your flavor? Because if we're not preaching the gospel, if we're not winning souls, if we're not inviting people into the kingdom, into the house, we're like the salt that's lost its flavor, savor. Salt. S salt has a purpose. In, in ancient times, in the old days, salt was used to, to um, preserve meat. They didn't have fridges in those days, so they covered the meat with, with salt. You preserve things, bring preservation. Your presence, ashes, your, you being born again, you, you're bringing the presence of God into wherever you go. The Holy Spirit is in you. Where you go, you bring the light. That's the second part of that scripture. It says you are the light of the, light of the, of, um, the world. You are, you are the light. There's light in you. So the salt would bring healing. Those days, they didn't have all the, the medicines and stuff that we have today. If you had a cut, if you had an injury, what did they rub on that? They rubbed salt on it. There's a purpose. There's a use for salt. That's why they used this. Um, and Jesus, you know, preaches this and uses it as an analogy. So salt, you're called, you, you're called to bring that healing. Broken hearts. People that are, that are suffering sickness and disease. You pray in Jesus' name that that person gets healed because you're the salt. <laughs> salt brings uh, flavor. Salt brings flavor. You're called to change the atmosphere because of the presence of God in you. Things change because you're a child of God. Salt. You, you are the salt of the earth. You are Yah on earth. God wants to use you for His purpose. You have, you're called to live a life of purpose. He says you are the light of the world. They used salt for cleaning. They, didn't, they couldn't go and buy detergent like we can today. So they used water and they used salt. And they, they used that with the clothes. With their fabrics and the cloth. They use salt. Salt brings a cleansing. We, we bring the light of Christ. We bring the presence of Christ. We bring the love of Christ. But we bring the truth. And where, they, where you have light, if you step into the, the darkness, there's light. Um, there's cleansing. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. <laughs> but you are the salt. So you are the conduit. God uses people. Hallelujah. No more excuses. We've got to love people. And then what else we need to do? Well, we need to go out and invite. The, 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 the master said, go out quickly. He says, go out quickly. So here's the urgency part. So the master says, go out quickly. 
Go out quickly and go and invite and compile the people to come in. Compile them. Convince them. Make them come in. Use what you have to use to get them to Jesus, to get them to God. <laughs> Today we use, we want a candy coat and we want to say, oh, you know, you like, we accept you the way you are. And, um, and that's okay. We just want to love you. And, uh, and you don't have to change. No, you, you, you know, if you carry on like this, you're a good person. We love you. And No, that's not the gospel. The gospel is, if you do not repent, if you do not receive Jesus, you're going to hell. He loves you, but he, he, and he doesn't want you to go to hell, but you cannot continue on this path. You cannot serve, uh, uh, keep serving Satan. You cannot live a life like this. There's, you've got to change, and Jesus is the one that changes you, but you have to repent. You have to decide. Are you going to decide to follow Jesus? Or are you going to decide to continue in the world? Well, there's consequences. There's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. Heaven and hell is real. The devil, the devil is real. And so we've, we've watered down the, the, the message. And we want to accept all people. That's fine. But there's got to be repentance. There's got to be a change. You have to either serve Jesus or you're serving Satan. There's no in-between. And the consequence doesn't change. The end is either you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. Well, if you want to go to heaven, you've got to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have to repent. And there has to be fruit in your life of real repentance that you are following Jesus Christ. You're becoming more like Him. And it's the power, it's the Holy Spirit that does the changing in you. But you, only you can decide. If your wife is serving Jesus and you're not, well, that doesn't get you into heaven. If you go to church um, and you know you're in a good, but you've not, not received Jesus, well, you're not going to heaven. You've got to personally receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and there's got to be repentance and there has to be change. And it's the blood of Jesus, it's the power of Christ, it's the love of God that will change you. But you cannot, you cannot change you. That's why we needed a Savior. <laughs> That's why we have a God who is a God that saves. We have Jesus, his, his mission is to seek and save the lost. But there is consequences. And we cannot water down the gospel. The, the master in the story is the father. And he got angry because people gave an excuse as why they cannot be in the house. Why? They cannot be part of the family of, of, of Christ. You see, many, the truth is there are people that are not going to go to heaven because they've chosen the world over Jesus. They've chosen their possessions. They've chosen their prosperity. They've put their work, their career, their studies, their, the, the business above Jesus. And that's more important than, than Him. Well, there's going to be a consequence. Hallelujah. But not me and you. We're going to love Jesus. We're going, to, we're going to be the salt. We're called to be the salt. We're called to be, invite people in. We're called to love people. We love them enough not to uh, deceive them and, and water down and, and give them a half a message. No, we love people. Therefore, we're going to tell the truth. We speak the truth because we love them. We don't want them to go to hell. Hallelujah. Time is up. Praise God. I hope that you have enjoyed this message. Um, I've, I've enjoyed uh, sharing with you. And you know, if you're on this call today and you have never received Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, you're not serving the Father. I want to pray for you and I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Maybe you've, you've never heard about Jesus. Well, I am going to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus right now as your Lord and as your Savior. He has a plan for your life. He wants to be with you in heaven. The truth is that the only way to the Father is through His Son, Jesus Christ. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us at the cross of Calvary. And if we call on His name, we will be saved. The time for salvation is now. 
you are not guaranteed a tomorrow. You are not guaranteed what's going to happen tomorrow. But what you are guaranteed is if you believe, if you call on the name of Jesus, if you believe in Jesus and you receive him into your heart and repent of your sins, he will forgive you, he will cleanse you, and he will put you in right standing with the Father. And we can enter into relationship and learn about him and follow him. If you want to pray that prayer, I want you to pray these words after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I confess that I am a sinner. I need you, Jesus Christ. I invite you, Jesus Christ, into my heart, into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I thank you, Father, that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for me at the cross of Calvary. Jesus, you paid my price and you died my death at the cross. I receive you into my heart. I believe you are the, the Savior of the world. I believe you are the Savior of my life. I thank you that as I receive you now, I have been given the right to be called the child of God. I thank you, Jesus, that I am your child. I receive you as the Lord and as the Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. There we go. God bless you. Congratulations if you prayed that prayer for the first time. You are now a child of God, but now you need to, you need to get connected into a church. Make sure that you get to someone that will teach you how to pray, teach you how to get a Bible. Make sure you get into the Word and we will follow Jesus all the days of our lives. Thank you, church, for uh, connecting with me today. I look forward to seeing you next week for next week's lesson. God bless you. Bye-bye for now.